You know, I really should have thought this season through a bit better. I've been to Countdown so many times now, by this point that I'm almost sick of it. But it's really not my fault that they keep getting so many great bands, case in point, Billy Talents. They initially formed in 1993 under the name of Pez, where they released one album, album named Watoosh. But I will not be covering that album because that would make for a very short and disappointing episode, more so than usual. Still, Billy Talent have had a 25 year career and have had no actual lineup changes with the exception of their original drummer having stepped down to deal with his illness no longer go. Here's hoping that it gets better. It's backtracking, and this time it's Billy Talent. We start with the band's first album title, Billy Talent, released in 2003 through Atlantic Records and produced by Gavin Gold Brown. I'd like to speak about this album title and the title of the next two before getting to the actual facts. As people know from watching this season of backtracking so far, almost none of the bands I've gone over have had a self-titled debut or even an album named after themselves at all. Billy Talent have not just a self-titled debut, but their follow-up is called Billy Talent 2, and the third one is called Billy Talent 3. I can only suspect this to be some cruel form of punishment for the other bands that I picked this season. Anyway, this album is the band's shortest, at 41 minutes and 4 seconds, and right off the bat we get the band's signature mixture of sounds. Uh, they mix elements of punk rock and alternative rock, along with some post hardcore screen vocals, and even a little bit of emo to add to the more emotional side of things. They have a nice eclectic range, and they bounce between the sounds really well. The album carries a fast pace for the most part, combining sort of structured songs with a wide variety of lyrical topics. The main overarching theme seems to be mental illnesses, love, and there's even possibly a song about rape and abuse as well, so the band goes to some pretty dark places. I say possibly because those are the implications that I got while I was listening to said song, so, you yeah, know, but that's just me. Ben Kovalevich, uh, he's Polish, uh, well he has Polish ancestry, has a unique style of storytelling and his many styles of vocals help to bring that along. He has not so much a traditional hardcore scream as much as he has sort of a high-pitched yelp, which you would think would get annoying after a while, but he balances the storytelling out between that and a more nasally clean singing style that works surprisingly well for the messages that the band are trying to convey, as dark as those messages can be. The balance is what's most important though, especially when you're playing around with this many styles and genres. Sure, it carries a mostly fast pace, but there are slow moments to help bring along the more emotional punch even better. Not to mention the production having a really raw feel to it, just adding to the overall sound and themes. I already covered Ben's vocals, but the dude has such an underrated range in the vocal style that just sounds so good to me. Ian DeSar is a great guitarist with chunky riffs and some good solos, along with John Gallen's deep bass work. And I honestly think Gallen might be one of my favourite bassists, personally. Uh, him and Ian put together great backing vocal work and screen as well, blending well with Ben's vocals. And Aaron Solo Von Yukes, I hope I'm saying that one right, because he's also a Polish ancestry. Uh, yeah, his drumming's on point, balanced, timed well, and heavy hitting. Standard songs include Lies, The X, Try Honestly, Nothing to Lose, and my favourite in River Below. Billy Talent's debut is a solid, fast paced, and well structured piece with the raw production and passion apparent from the get go, and I can't recommend it. It's just really good. We then reach the band's second album, Billy Talent 2. Uh, they use Roman numerals for 1, 2, and 3, by the way. Uh, released in 2006, the label and producers stay the same, but this time the band's guitarist joins out with the production too. Anyway, this album would contain the first song that I think most people know by the band in Fallen Leaves. As grateful as I am to be a fan of the band now, I've got to say that back when that first uh, that song first came out, I did like it at, at a point. Then it got played to hell on radio and I got really tired of it. But when writing for this backtracking episode, I have to say that I do still have a fondness for it. I mean, without the song, we would have, have gotten other stuff by them, so it's really not all that bad. Anyway, this album shows a similar mix of the band's style from that debut, with some songs venturing into more hardcore territory, some more punk, some more rock, and so on. But what's surprising is the amount of maturity in the band's songwriting and structuring, giving us a bit more balance. It even tackles some darker subject matter lyrically, tackling issues like religion, depression, and heartbreak. The band's ability to bounce between sounds is tested more here too, but the remarkable thing is their amazing grasp of tone. When they sing about certain things and tell certain stories, they knew that they had to get the backdrop just right, and they did. One thing that was a big help was having Ian produce the album alongside Gavin Brown. I've said it before, but it bears repeating. Even if just one band member is involved in the production, it can have a major impact on the sound, more often than not a positive one. I'm amazed at the restraint that was put into things too. The album isn't overly produced and it's as balanced as the songs on the album are. Speaking of which, the vocals have taken a major step forward, most specifically the backing vocal work. John and Ian provide a great screaming mixture to back up the choruses, with Ian's clean style helping to complement certain points in certain songs, but it's not done too much where anyone is hogging the spotlight. Ben's own vocals sound better too, adding a radio screen to his style and a clearer singing tone of voice, which makes him easier to understand. Ian's guitar work is great, having more solos and amazing riffs. 
John's bass work carries an awesome choke and tone to it, which just sounds nice and deep and lovely. And Aaron's drumming crashes hard and sounds amazing too, with amazing timing and skill, just picking up on all the loose ends. So that songs include Fallen Leaves, yeah, uh, Work of Bees, Devil in the Midnight Bass, Red Flag, and my favourite in Covered in Cowardice. I just realised I said Devil in the Midnight Bass, I meant to say Mass. Uh, Billy Talent Numero Dos improves on their debut like a good sequel should. It irons out the production issues, sends a balance and sound structure, and shows the band's growth as music musicians. Musicians. I can easily recommend this one. Next up, we reach the third album, Billy Talent 3. Released in 2009, there's a label change along with a producer change to go along with it, as the band would leave Atlantic for one of Music Canada, where they'd stay, but they also released this one with a highly regarded Roadrunner label. The new producer is Brendan O'Brien, another pretty good producer. Uh, this album would also be my first Billy Talent album that I listened to all the way through before having to go over the old stuff and backtracking, of, backtracking, of course. When I first listened to this album back when it came out, I remember distinctly liking it, despite the fact that critical reviews of it were mixed at best and negative at worst. Listening to it a second time, I still kind of like the album, but not as much as I used to. I guess that part of that is hearing every other thing by them. Uh, I'll explain. 3 is possibly the band's most subdued effort, with not as many heavy moments as I would like there to be. The structuring is solid enough, but it's kind of repetitive after, after a while, and the same goes with the lyrics. Billy Talents have often been known to try and make things rhyme a lot, which I can appreciate, but it feels kind of forced from time to time on this one. The production doesn't help either. Even when the band does kick into their more hardcore moments, it doesn't sound as good as it should be. It just kind of feels like an album full of missed opportunities, to be honest. Sure, it has more guitar solos, which is always a plus, but they feel sort of unnecessary in certain places. Having them produced to buggery doesn't help, and the imbalance is kind of shocking. Ben doesn't do a lot of his screen vocals on this one, but when he does, it once again just sounds forced, and sounds really tonally imbalanced with the instrumental background and the lyrical subject matter, which mostly consists of love, suicide, and depression. However, there is a slight showing light with those same lyrics, as we do get some political stuff, which sounds weird to say, but bear with me. The track Turn Your Back, which is just insane in Chris number 2 of Anti Flag, is a stellar example of how good Billy Talent sound as a punk rock band and features good political subject matter without it sounding too forced. This will be a lovely little background thing for, well, we'll get to that later. Also, with that in mind, Anti Flag's appearance does make this the only Billy Talent album to date to actually have guest stars, so kudos for that. Ben's vocals are good and his clean singing sounds better, but he screams at bad times and his lyrics sound kind of forced for the most part. Ian's guitar can still pump out a solid riff and a good solo, but it just doesn't stand out with all the production going on. John's bass is also still good and deep, but it's buried under production as well, like the guitar is. And Aaron's drumming just sounds kind of slow, to like keep with the slower pace of the album. It's not bad, but it's just as subdued as the rest of the sound, and it's just not as heavy as I would want it to be. Standard songs include Turn Your Back, White Sparrows, Devil on My Shoulder, and my favourite in The Dead Can't Testify. Billy Talent is, 3 is good in places, but it's overproduced, imbalanced, and just kind of underwhelming. Not bad for a first time listener of the band, but as someone who knows that they can do better, it feels like the song could have been so much more. I can still recommend it though, it is worth your time, but don't be surprised if you don't want to listen to it all again immediately after the first time. We next reached the band's fourth album, titled Dead Silence. Besides being the first album by the band to not be numbered, it was released on Last Gang Records along with the One Music Canada label, and this time guitarist Ian Starr handles the production, and that is a very good thing indeed, but I'll talk more about that a bit later. So the band decided to take a different stylistic approach to this one, but still sounding a lot like themselves. The album has a more punk rock feel to it, but it mixes that up with the political things I alluded to whilst going over Billy Talent 3. But more than that, the album has a lot more balance to it, which could be chalked up to the album's length of almost 54 minutes, making it their longest album. Songs about love actually have the right tone, same as songs about politics, the class system, and there's significantly fewer instances of things such as depression coming up as an issue, which I guess is a step in the right direction. In contrast to how I felt about Billy Town 3 when I first heard that, I still have the same love for Dead Silence six years later, even after I remember enjoying it way back in 2012. A lot of bands could have taken a more experimental experimental route and messed it up horribly. But then Billy Talent remembered that where that went wrong for them last time and they managed to hit the nail right on the head with Dead Silence. There's just a better sense of cohesion between the band members too, with the vocals being a good example of the band's new fan grasp and having a better balance on things. It feels like this is the album that should have followed their second album, but I'm glad that we waited a bit longer for it personally. Tonally it's more appropriate and sounds better structurally, with each member opening certain tracks in their own unique ways without feeling like anyone is rushing to try and keep up with the others. And the production is just stellar, actually accentuating the parts that matter the most, making everything sound clean and well polished without being so overblown, and it's once again so well balanced. 
the lyrical matter and the instrumentals go hand in hand a bit more too. I know that I glossed over it earlier, but having a better grasp of balance and structure in a more political sounding album is a key to pulling out that kind to pulling that kind of thing off. And Billy Tom have done their research, got like what they've got wrong before, and tied up everything that they needed to. Ben's vocals sound a lot cleaner, it's nice to hear him go back to his screams and sound like he's having more fun despite it being a more serious album in terms of tone. Ian's guitar work is great with awesome chord riffs and fantastic solos. Uh, John's bass work sounds more highlighted and it's fun to hear him having a good time clipping on and sounding great, along with the backing vocal work sounding awesome as well, and Aaron's drumming picks up on speed and timing more sounding happy and playing along well with the others. Standard songs include Man Alive, Viking Death March, Stand Up and Run, Surprise Surprise, and my favourite are Running Across the Tracks. Dead Silence is a bold step forward for the band, uh, with better production, good experimentation, solid structuring, and a sense of fun that just wasn't much there on their last album. Uh, I can easily recommend this one. And finally, we reach the band's fifth album, Afraid of Heights. Released in 2016, it marks the longest period between studio album releases, as they released the greatest hits album in 2014, simply called Hits. Innovative thinking, that. Anyway, the song came out through Warner Music Canada and the End Records and was produced by Inda Saar again, and it sort of features the lineup changes. Drummer Aaron Sullivan York would have to step down due to a relapse of, multi- relapse of multiple sclerosis, causing longtime friends and fellow Canadian drummer Jordan Rabbit and Hastings to step in, and he's best known for his work with the band Alexis on Fire, who are also from Canada. In fact, to that end, Aaron's only drumming credit for the album is for a demo version of the track Leave Them All Behind. Uh, speaking of which, there were a lot of demo tracks saved for people who got the deluxe edition of this album, but I've only ever listened to the standard edition. Having said that, there's only four tracks that don't have a demo version, so let's go over those because I like wasting people's time. I could waste it more by saying, like, the eight that do. But anyway, Rabbit Down the Hall, Horses and Chariots, This Is Our War, and February Wins. So, yeah, this album is possibly Billy Tom's most political sounding one. Considering that this was in 2016, but released about four months before the American elections took place, the political themes are no surprise. But it's not just that, as Billy Tom's signature themes of love and addiction I hear from time to time too. It's actually well balanced tonally with the kind of message they want to convey, but the most important part of any good political album is that we all stand together and there are a lot of songs that basically scream that in your face, but in the best possible way. Having the right structure to go with the right, uh, the right structure to go with the right tone creates a near peerless balance. It's one of the reasons why this album is, was a favorite of mine in 2016, and maybe even the band's best work today, in my opinion. It narrowly beats their second album for me, and it has the advantage of being more catchy and accessible. I think that another part of that is the production, though. Ian's work behind the booth was damn good before. It was fantastic on Dead Silence, and it's absolutely stellar on Fred Heights. Once again, getting the balance right in the political album is the key to the album's success, and Billy Talent's fucking nailed it there. Ben's vocals sound better than ever, having more range, holding his screams longer and sounding a bit quicker and sharper. Ian's guitar work is great with awesome licks and brilliant solos, John's bass work carries a great chuck, sounding nice and deep and just groovy, and Jordan's work behind the kit proves that he is a damn good sounding for Aaron, playing with great speeds, balance and technique. Standard songs include the title track, The Crutch, Ghost Ship of Cannibal Rats, Flatter Than the DJ, and My Favourite in February Wins. Afraid of Heights is accessible, passionate, produced beautifully, balanced well, instructed damn near perfectly with solid that and substance, and I can definitely recommend this one. So it's time to round them up. Fair album by them is probably Afraid of Heights. I basically just finished giving you the reasons why, but seriously, listen to it for yourself. It's just so awesome and passionate and just sounds really good. Uh, least favourite is maybe Billy Talent 3. Whilst it is likeable enough and is still worth a listen, it's probably the one album that I want to listen to the least of all of their stuff. It still has some good songs, but compared to how great 2 was and how good Dead Silence and Afraid of Heights are after that, it's a bit of a letdown. Uh, anyway, that'll about really do it for this episode. The next Backtrack episode won't be up for a while since it's a two-part episode where I'll be covering New Jersey's own Senses Fail. Really looking forward to doing that because I've been wanting to do that episode for a while. But there's probably going to be a UFC card before then, so I'll see you all for that one. Uh, yeah, it all depends on what happens. As always, thank you for listening. You're awesome. Bye-bye.